For years, Georgia has had the great reputation of being a more affordable place to live where you could still afford the American dream of home ownership. But is that really still the case? Are we still seeing that in Georgia? Today, I wanna to go over all of that with you. Mild winters, endless job opportunities, everything from mountains to beaches. I feel like Georgia is a pretty great place to live. However, being a Georgia native, I might be a bit biased, but with 182 people a day making a move to Georgia, I tend to think maybe they agree with me. The past few years, we've seen a large increase of people making the move to Georgia. And while pricing here has increased, specifically in the city of Atlanta, when you compare us to other major cities, Atlanta is still incredibly affordable. Cereal is $8. First, let's just start with our basic necessities. Groceries have increased over 25% the last four years alone. So apples, produce, right? We've got $1.79 for these apples, $2.39 for these apples. It used to be you could get like a whole bunch of them for that same price. For a gallon of milk, we're looking at $3.19 today. Now our eggs. I guess there's so many choices, it really depends on what you're going for. If you're one of the healthier ones that try to be and you're in the organics, we're looking at like $7 for a thing of 12 eggs. I actually read an article the other day that I found interesting and it said that people are grocery store hopping now more than ever trying to find the best deals. And who is the winner? Aldi, of course. We actually have a couple of those grocery stores around here, but I have to say I haven't been a grocery store hopper. Maybe I should start. Now that we've been shopping together, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope this video helps you gain some insight to Georgia. And one of the big factors to consider is gonna be taxes and housing. Home prices in Metro Atlanta have continued to rise, although thankfully at a much more realistic trend of just over 5%. The average sales price of a home really depends strongly on where you are. It's gonna depend on the school district that you're in. Areas like Alpharetta, you have an average sales price hovering around $750,000, and that's for resale. If you're looking at new construction, you're closer to a million and up. Areas like Dawsonville and Woodstock, we're hovering closer to $450,000, so a much more realistic price. Now, again, if you're looking at new construction in those areas, you're going to be looking at about $500,000 and going up. It feels like there's a new neighborhood on almost every corner. New construction is assisting with the inventory challenges that we're having here, but not quickly enough. Popular builder Toll Brothers has multiple communities spreading from Woodstock over into Cumming. They've got some really pretty floor plans and their amenities are top notch. The one thing you're not going to find in a lot of new construction communities that I continue to hear people complain about is the yard sizes. Builders just cannot afford with the price of land these days to continue to give large lots. That would increase the price of the home even more, making home affordability even less. If price or perhaps a lot size is something you're concerned about, a resale home might be the way to go. Homes built in the 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s can many times provide a much larger lot. And in some cases, stretch your budget just a little bit further. Condos and apartments used to only really be found in the city, but with so many micro cities happening, we're starting to see a lot more of that here. Sugar Hill and Swanee are two areas that have done a great job, specifically Sugar Hill, with adding a lot of urban vibes to, to the area. I've had quite a few clients move here recently from the state of Florida and New York. And I have to say, I was taken aback when they were sharing with me the amount of taxes that they pay. Forget about the fact that homes are more affordable here. The amount you save in taxes and insurance alone was mind blowing. Taxes here vary by county with Fulton being the highest. If you happen to live in the city limits, you're gonna also pay city tax on top of paying the county tax. Where you live greatly impacts your tax bill. So for instance, we'll take Gwinnett County, they have a millage rate of 25. So you can kind of estimate that to be for every $100,000, you're paying $1,000 in taxes. The last few years, as home prices have risen, so have property taxes. Thankfully, Georgia's governor, Governor Kemp, passed a bill this year that limits the amount property taxes can increase each year, capping it at 3% per year. 
when you close on a home here in Georgia, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and file for homestead exemption. You file one time and it lasts the entire length of the time that you're in the property using it as your primary residence. This is gonna give you a really great tax break each year on your taxes. Bonus, if you're in your golden years, many of the cities here in Georgia have a senior tax exemption, which once you turn 62 or 65, depending on the town that you're in, they're going to completely eliminate the school tax. School tax is about 50% of your tax bill. So let me break this down for you. My mom and I live about three minutes apart. My tax bill this year was over $4,000. Hers was 800. Utilities will obviously vary depending on how many people you have living in the home and then also where you decide to keep the thermostat. Typically you pay for water, electricity, internet and cable, and in some homes, gas for heat and cooking. A typical water bill is gonna run you about 30 to $40 a month, but keep in mind during the summer, if you're gonna be using the sprinklers or watering the grass, this could definitely increase. Internet and cable, you're probably going to be running about $100 to $180 a month, just depending on what provider and what speed you're looking to go with. And then with electric and gas, you're going to be running about $150 a month. I will say that a lot of companies here give you the option to kind of spread that out because obviously with gas, most places here have gas heat. So in the summertime, you're barely gonna have a bill at all, but during the winter, it could definitely be higher. So they give you that option to spread that out over a 12 month period so that you can kind of budget a little bit better. I hope this video helped you gain insight into what it truly costs to live in Metro Atlanta. Making a move is a really big decision and you need to really weigh the pros and cons and make sure it's the right fit for you. If you're thinking about making a move to or within the state of Georgia, my team and I would love to be a resource. Reach out to me at ashley at myhaventeam.com or you can reach out to me at the information in the description below. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.